as I said, my name is Peg Alexander, and I guess most of you are wondering why I'm stood up here tonight. Well, I think probably in a nutshell, let's say, it might be because I'm local in this last, um, and I've always had it easy, and I certainly haven't had things handed to me on a plate, but despite all that, I think I've done pretty well, and I've been quite successful, and I'm going to share, if you like, some of my thoughts and musings with you about that. So I just kind of tell you that to, to give you an idea of the fact that you can go on and do things even if you don't necessarily have the best start. But I have to say that these things didn't just happen. Okay, I wasn't just walking down the street and someone just picked me and said, here you go, do you want, do you want to have that? I didn't just stumble into it. The reality is actually far more mundane because I would say I had all these opportunities because I've worked hard I've worked without fear, I've often worked for no money, and I've worked resiliently. So I just want to take each of them working hard. Well, I think that's just how it is if you want to succeed in life. And I think that most of you in here will know that though, won't you, because of the fact that you're getting uh, prizes and you've all worked exceptionally hard and I understand with real excellence to get the results and the prizes, to get to the universities you're in, to get the jobs that you've had. But you know, life is no different. And whether it's working at school, or it's working in jobs, or it's working at our relationships, or it's working with our families, it's no different. We have to work really hard. And a lot of the time, nobody is pushing you to do it. You know, you just have to get on and push yourself to do it. But I've always felt that when you love what you do, it doesn't seem so hard to work hard because it can come quite naturally. Working without fear, well, what do I mean with that? I think what I mean by that is that I've never been scared to learn new things and to literally just, you know, get stuck in and have a go. And often with no formal training and no, no support at all. And in fact, I think I've found through life that that's probably one of the most satisfying things that I've done when you actually learn to do something just by getting stuck in and having a go. Now, Ms. Morrissey also mentioned about the fact that you're in technology college, and I just wanted to touch briefly on technology, because I found you very jealous, actually, of those of you who are just finishing or have just finished school at the moment in this technological era. Because, you know, the things that you take for granted as part of everyday life, like the internet, smartphones, the ability to communicate with the touch of a button, they are so wonderful, you know, and they can make dreams become real, they can make dreams so much more achievable. You have a doorway out to the world that I'm afraid lots of us up here just could never, ever have imagined being able to have. And you've got that there. And sites like LinkedIn may not seem so relevant to you at the moment, but when it comes to making professional links, things like that can really, really help. But I wanted to give you a warning about social media because I was saying this is a doorway out to the world, absolutely is, but you've got to remember it's a two-way door and you need to use it responsibly. And I think a lot of you here are at an age where you need to think about your Facebook posts and how you promote yourself to the rest of the world and to think about what you put up there and whether that's how you want people to see you in a few years' time. Because you do need to remember that what you put on social media never actually disappears. In fact, a recent study found that nearly 90%, that's 90% of US employers are using or they plan to use Facebook and other social media sites to check out potential employees whilst recruiting. So I would say to you, really start thinking about what you're putting up there now. And also remember, when it comes to jobs, you do need to accept that the ways that maybe you talk to each other aren't going to be right when it comes to applying for jobs. The last job that I recruited for, um, I, I received an application, um, I received a, a number of applications that were written in text speak, actually, that's true. I also received one which started, and this is true, Yo Peg. <laughs> and uh, one person even managed to misspell their own name. <laughs> so, uh, given that I was looking for someone where the job description said they had to be able to uh, communicate appropriately with a range of different audiences, <coughs> I have to say, yo was not an appropriate way to start job description, job application. And I've also worked with resilience. 
And what I mean by that is I persevere and I don't give up. But you know, I think if you're going to be resilient and you're going to keep going, you also have to do it with a smile and an awareness of other people. Because uh, one of my mottos in life, which I think is a really good motto, is that people like to work with and like to be around people that they like. It's as simple as that. So whilst you need to be resilient, you also need to remember, I think, to be a nice person. But that resilience is important because Sometimes life doesn't go the way that we want it to go. You know, sometimes things are far harder than we thought they were going to be, or difficult and challenging things happen along the way, and things don't go to plan. But you know, I think it's when we get tested like that, that really in a way we kind of find out what type of person we are. History is actually chocker with loads of people who failed before they succeeded. You know, from Thomas Edison, who said that he failed to discover the light bulb tens of thousands of times, through to very celebrated J.K. Rowling, who had her Harry Potter manuscripts turned down by pretty much every publisher going before somebody said yes. There's a famous quote from Winston Churchill, and he said, Success consists of going from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And I really like that, because I think you have to keep enthusiasm. Or if you want a bit more of a spiritual thought on failure, here's one from Buddha. The only real failure in life is not to be true to the best 